Where are we? Turkey. <laughs> Four flights. Anchor of Four Anchor flights. Of Turkey, the capital Does of not Turkey. Make excellent fitness. Started in Malaysia at 12:40 at night. Then we went to Bombay, India. And mosquitoes got on the plane. Then we flew to Cairo and landed. We had a layover. Some guy wanted us to bribe him. <laughs> then we flew to Istanbul. And then we had a six hour layover. And then we flew to Ankara. And now we're here. And it's seven. So 41 hours right now. And we're supposed to stay up another six hours and a weird guy is coming right now. <laughs> Turkey hoş geldiniz. Welcome to Turkey. <laughs> Lasagna. Garfield. Sort of. Get your mind off Garfield. I can't. <laughs> it's overtaken the metal show. He's always eating chunks for me. And he's also eating John's ferns all the time. John's ferns. <laughs> John's what? Ferns? Ferns. Oh. A plant. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I had an idea for what the DVD should be, the main plot line. Oh, what? It's about change. <laughs> how traveling the world changes Horse the Band, and how Horse the Band traveling changes the world. That's a good idea, Gary. You reckon? It's gonna change us to be disrespectful assholes. <laughs> and it will change the world. Entropy. <laughs> Do you agree? Do you concur? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, what is... I think it, everyone already is a disrespectful asshole for the most part. <laughs> what would happen if someone brought eggs into your home? It's been it's, done. We just did it. Oh, yeah, you did? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, and no. we offered him some. <laughs> He said he would kill anyone. Yeah, last night, last night he was like, I'll kill people. people. <laughs> we were asleep for that. Yeah, I'm really, really <laughs> sorry. Yeah, if I get the smell of the egg bites, man, I'm destroyed. <laughs> Did it destroy you? No, not, not today. I don't know why. We mix it with a lot of spinach. You guys should start a support group or something. Dude, maybe. But then again, I'm going to try to change the game, so... I was thinking about walking around in Ute, I was thinking about making up some scrambled eggs with some like jalapenos and black pepper and like freaking uh, bell pepper and lobster. lobster and a computer. So traveling the world really has changed Nathan Winnick? No, but it puts me in the position to feel that it's time to change myself. So how is Fuck it? China. Hey. Yeah. How has Earth Tour changed you? Mm. Not that much. Yet. Not yet? But the past three month tour before this one was the one that really ruined my entire life. How so? I don't. Changed my outlook on humanity. It's cold out there. Yeah. Like, yeah, everything out. basic undertaking. <laughs> or actions by humans and individual <laughs> lives or all of humanity as a whole became meaningless to me in a sense it's different now though I value creativity and people who understand that concept I just mentioned but carry on in the face of it 
and don't think it's depressing, <clears throat> but find it liberating. And people who throw themselves into doing something that's never been done before or making people feel a certain way. Dave, I'm filming an interview. <laughs> who actually succeed. Because that's all we have. And there's no point to pretend that we're not alive and living right now. So we may as well do something. But people who can bring other people out of their routine and their, their death sentence that's already happened for a lot of the world, then that's cool if someone can do that. That's your job. I don't know. That's all. When you were getting so mad at all the white people, and you were saying, what the fuck, we came all the way to China, we didn't want to play for white people, it's like, it hit me in hindsight, like, wow, like, those kids love your band, love your music, paid to get in. And like, had a unique relationship that could have occurred between you and them, and an exchange between fan and, and the artist, and like, it, you, you were so quickly just like, fuck them. They're, they're fucking idiots, they're assholes. <laughs> no! And I wonder if, if like, the desire to always conquer unconquered territory and like, achieve new goals and reach new heights of like, bigger and bigger and bigger and better and better and better, like, or whatever, at what point you'd be like, that's it, like, there's nothing left, so. And I still feel yearning for more. Now what, you know? Jesus. It's interesting that you brought up Napoleon and shit before. Those kids, though, I was just kidding. I mean, I wasn't yeah. really, like, pissed at them at all, because I was happy they were there. I was just more like, I can't believe we're in Shanghai, China, and half of the crowd is white. But, like, it's also cool, because I never thought that we would be playing to so many, like, wayward Westerners, you know? And, like, yeah. they're, like, in the middle of this culture, and it's like, oh shit, like a band from like where I'm from and they all come out and that's crazy. But it's also fun to be like, fuck these people. Yeah. But I really knew that we weren't even serious anyway. Yeah. Like just in general, I think the only one who took it seriously was the bitch that I kept trying to make sit down and wouldn't sit down and finally just left. Right. <laughs> she's the only one the whole time she's just like, The Capri pants white people though. They can get out. I don't <laughs> care about them. They're not even people. Well, the only place you see those guys is at a mall or at a hotel. It's like... You'd probably see them at like resort beaches and spas and stuff yeah. too. We just haven't hit any of those spots. They're people who travel across the world to do exactly what they do at home. It's weird that... Yeah. It's weird that um, if you walk on any kind of path of like oh. self-realized righteousness, that like it makes you way more judgmental than other people. I'm a sort of judgmental dude. It's I tough because be. everything, everything it's based out of are like positive things, like ambition to do better and like to grow or whatever, but like. It's weird that like it fuels such a negative characteristic in general. I'm generalizing judgmentally, but like such a generally like, <laughs> judgmental or, or in, intolerance. Like it's tough. I wonder if like my hope for you as your friend will be that somehow at the end of this tour, like you'll be so worldly and so experienced that your tolerance will like vastly expand itself, and that you'll be even more loving and, and appreciative of of the same people that we hate now. I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> I place no value on them. <laughs> Until they take a good hard look at themselves and think about life. I mean, I don't want to kill them. <laughs> I just don't 
think that they're bringing anything to the table. Because I think most people that are like truly judgmental yeah. are very judgmental on themselves too. Exactly. <laughs> I can't wear my hoodie. Like, I don't know. I definitely don't think that I'm doing the right thing or perfect. No, like I don't like myself. I think uh, you and Dave, like, I admire the way you guys like collect experiences like trophies. Like, you earn. Like, it's all yeah. It's all about like collecting these unusual, untypical, circumstantial experiences and you know, having them like, uh, like trophies. It's cool, I don't have them in any trophies in that way. <clears throat> I don't really think I'm trying to conquer or even like collect trophies because I don't really even ever tell anyone about anything I've ever done because I think that they're so <laughs> bored to listen to it that like it all just stays on the inside. Yeah. I think I'm just really trying to get a handle on just how other people exist and live. The thing that's most interesting to me is like what all these different people think the point of their life is and why they keep going from day to day. And that's like, that's actually what I'm trying to figure out. So you're, in a sense, you're trying to figure out that same answer for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's not like... Through trying to identify other people. I mean, I like, I like doing stuff that's new because I'm really bored in my <laughs> life too, but I'm not trying to wear them as like badges or trophies, like to, you know, conquer anything. Right. But one thing that was a huge mindfuck for me recently was just yesterday when we flew from Malaysia to India to Egypt to Turkey, like, I know. and we just hit all four like completely different civilizations, races, cultures within like hours. That was, I can't wrap my head around it at all, but it's like we, they're all completely distinct. They're all their own thing. And we were just like, boop, 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 like hours from each other. That's just, it makes the world so small and so huge at the same time that I don't even know what to think of it. It's weird. It definitely, each day we have to kind of like, each day there's definitely that dual perspective of where the world starts to seem really small from the airplane and you're like, fuck, I could just go anywhere. I could just pay fucking yeah. dollars and go anywhere. It's so un it's so limitless. I mean there's no like it makes the world all of a sudden seem like when you think about human drama and human feelings and like <clears throat> the the emotional side of human beings, then it's like, oh my god. <laughs> That's the problem, right? Because it's like how could I ever worry about any emotion I'm feeling when like all these billions of people have their own have the stories wrapped up in like, yeah. yeah, don't give a shit about any of them. I don't even know <laughs> them, like, and I never will. Yeah. But like, I want to also, I think we've still been completely Western almost the whole trip. And there's another side of existence that's like almost untouched. Cause like, it took so many thousands of years of isolation to build all these cultures and now exactly. like within like 50 years it's all going to be like people's yeah. skin color are different but exactly. people are living the same in every I'm big city or on the whole world it's like it sucks I don't know but <clears throat> at the same time it's people like me that are facilitating it to happen which <laughs> now my fear is like that western <laughs> culture going rapidly as it is now and more and more like exposure among people but yet more isolation and not truly like knowing anyone but knowing so many people and so many experiences and like the boredom and the fact that people work less and less to just sustain their lives like with each passing year is gonna have like horrible implications for humanity like as we move away from having to have like emotional attachment just to like survive, survive yeah that's going to get lost among these kids growing up like you know just like walmart existences and tv and like no parents that even give a shit about them and like they can 
use a computer and get anything they need from the, for themselves since they're like seven. Yeah, totally like, self-sufficient. And, and then not nurtured. Some of those kids will still get art and music in general, and it will like affect them. But I don't know. I'm I'm worried about the population as a whole growing more towards people that don't feel anything and aren't affected by art and music or people that can't love. It's true. I think like <laughs> art and music and that those aspects of culture are getting pushed more and more into an umbrella category called entertainment. Yeah. Which is like well, And furthermore they're like nobody takes time to create art anymore. Like even like our art our non musical artists and a lot of our musicians from our generation, they'll make like the quickest thing possible. Like what artist do you know, like popular youth visual artist actually spends like Painting a time. year yeah. Yeah. on something. Like I don't I know one person that spends a good amount of time on something, but not like like ten years, oh, you know. Bands. It's just like I've I've been hearing all these bands sort of at our level they're like yeah we're like we just started writing for a new record so we can go into the studio by the end of the month i was like what excuse me they're like yeah yeah four weeks from now we have studio time books so we have to we have to write this record i'm like she's gonna write a whole album in a month and then you're gonna do two months in the studio a three-month project and then that's one that. third of it is spent on one, actually one making it. up yeah. this stuff. It's like, actually like creating the songs. It's like, what the fuck? I mean, like all all the old great bands that we always looked at took years in between albums. But now it's like if you don't put one out every year on the dot, you get fucking swept under a rug. Your old news, your buzz is gone. Peace out. Yeah. It's like, so fucking lame, dude. And just... Going to like art shows like oh LA New York like the centers of our culture the most creative people in our country, you go to art shows there and it's like, oh like I fucking spray paint stenciled this stencil that I didn't even cut out myself over this fucking construction paper collage I made like <laughs> oh it took me one day and I mass produced a whole bunch of them that look almost the same like maybe it looks cool but there's nothing behind that and it's just like so many kids that want to be in that scene and be like I'm an artist or I'm a musician but like they're like how could I make enough pieces to sell so that I have like enough money I need to make something fast and it's like it's stupid like if you want to be an artist like sequester yourself and like Vincent Van Gogh dude he fucking he moved into monasteries and churches and volunteered worked for them in exchange for room and board, he like cleaned the church courtyards and stuff or whatever. And then in exchange for room and board, he had all the time he wanted to paint. He only had to work for like two or three hours a day. Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. If you do art, you shouldn't even tell anyone that you do it. Because <laughs> like, if you do, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Nah, well, except <clears throat> musician. To be acknowledged as a yeah. musician, as a songwriter, to be acknowledged or to be adored could very easily be looked at as just to be understood and to be related to. And when a kid understands, he says, hey, I love your music. What he's saying is like, I see what you did there. Like that little thing, it was good. I like it, like good job. And it's like, you know, that little pat on the back many, many times over eventually, yeah, yeah, yeah. eventually becomes like the feeling of like, wow, my life has total purpose. Like I'm doing good in the world. <coughs> <laughs> What's your motivation? To create something that looking back on it, I felt was still as moving as, or more, if that's even possible, than when I first made it. Well, that's a fucking, you know, come on, looking back on it, then you're never going to enjoy it while you're in it. <laughs> No, I just mean like <clears throat> 10 years from now or something. If I'm still happy about some of the stuff that we did, then I don't, it's not like irrelevant to me or it's like, oh, that was stupid. It was so young. Or like, yeah, oh, we're in that stage. Like, you yeah. know, like I am about everything that like, I've ever done. <laughs> like, then maybe I'll feel it okay. But then also, it's just like our whole scene is so 
here today, gone tomorrow, that even if they like something, it's like, does it really stick with them? And will you outlast it, you know? Yeah. Like, I know some of the bands that meant the world to me, like, ten years ago. I still think about it, I'm like, oh, that was so nice, but it's like, I listen to those songs now, and they don't hit me the same way. And they never will, like, and... <clears throat> I don't know. Even if people like my music now, so much of it is image and perceived image, and it's just like, also if someone thinks that they're cool by liking my band, that just means that they're like, a loser. Because <laughs> we're not even like, close to the coolest band like to YouTube. like, yeah. yeah, it's like some kid like, going to high school for the first time, he's like, oh, I need to go get new clothes. Oh, Miller's Outpost. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, I like Horse the Band. Like, <laughs> thinking they're cool for that, but like they're actually not at all. <laughs> like, maybe if it was someone that I really truly expect or uh, respected, also loved it, then I'd feel good, and that like I also respected their work, but like impressing a average sixteen-year-old fan of ours isn't. Especially when you talk to them and you realize the reason that they like it is like something you never even thought about or had like no hand in. Like it wasn't like your creation, it's just like a contingency. Like, See, that's one of the most inspiring things to me though. In our band, <clears throat> is that like this, this feeling all of a sudden they dropped this bomb on you where they're like, and I love that song that, that's, that's about blah, 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 blah. And you're thinking like, it's not about that at all. <laughs> But they're like, yeah, I just fucking love that song. Like, every day I get up, like, you know, I like I come, you know, I live in a really poor family or whatever. And, like, I don't really have much to look forward to or whatever. But, like, and I hate going to school and like, everybody picks on me or whatever. But, like, dude, as long as I fucking got that shit in my headphones, dude, I'm just like, yeah, today's going to be awesome. And I'm fucking getting shit done. And I'm fucking working hard. And blah, blah, blah. And you realize, like, <clears throat> their relationship with your music is belongs to them. And that's their thing. And, like... You created it, and you you get to like go to sleep at night feeling like, wow, I'm the architect of that. But like, <clears throat> you know, Horse the Band's music is special in ways that you don't control, and you're not ever gonna get to be a part of, and you're gonna have to always just be on the outside of. But like, at least you know that it was important and special, you know. And like, I just think that's awesome. I think that like that feeling of like. The members of the band aren't the only members of the project. That everybody involved in it, everybody who's yeah, ever bought a record, yeah, yeah, is also a member of what is like the horse, the band world. Oh, really? You know, then you can just kind of like relax a little bit and just be like, well, all I gotta do is fucking play keyboards and be good at it and like keep writing good riffs. I don't have to worry about like changing the world or how people look at my shit or whatever like they're gonna see what they oh, need yeah. to see it's totally you know for better or for worse you know it's not it's not even up to us <laughs> as as the writers of our music yeah it's weird but it's i don't know i think it's cool <clears throat> I, I, I like it i like it i think my huge problem or whatever is above all this stuff and it's like who gives a shit if I feel fulfillment if I end up feeling fulfilled does it just mean that I'm like stupid an <laughs> asshole or something in the end that I'm like that self-centered so like I don't even know I just basically like feel and stopped trying to figure it out I just want to get like scope that's like all I think that I want. Well, I think I think you got it. I think you got it. I think you're just not accepting that that's like a an acceptable life path. I think like that core fundamental principle of Buddhism that like one's devotion to the pursuit of whatever they're trying to master, that is the Zen behavior. That if that you never get there. The whole point is that you know the day that you achieve whatever you're trying to achieve, that's your last day on earth. That's when you die. You know, but that that a life's pursuit towards an ideal, some belief that's higher than yourself, whether it's like beautiful art or like amazing music, if your whole life is in the pursuit of that, that's the perfect life. 
See, that's what I think my overriding problem is that I don't believe that. <laughs> Even though that's what I've been trying to do, it's like the devoting my life to something doesn't seem like the, uh, and like trying to figure on, things on out, zone. you know? Yeah. yeah, it doesn't seem yeah, like the right way to spend my life because it's so well, I'm self not trying to figure shit out, but like, I know what you mean, yeah, self centered, but like, <laughs> but like, to take a higher ideal than yourself, like the good of the world, or music, or art, or uh, culture, or politics, or whatever, and to just figure out how you serve that beautiful, wonderful thing. Like, for me, like, I might never be a famous drummer. I might never, like, have a million dollars. I might never live in a nice house. Like, I might never <coughs> have, you know, any kind of real, like, notoriety or anything. But, like, I love drumming so much. And I just know that, like, the culture, the culture it came from, the lineage, the, like, the tradition of it, like, the, the poetry of it, the science of it, it's so beautiful to me. It's so wonderful that it's, like, fuck it. I just want to, like, give whatever I got to give to, like, drumming. It's, like... You know, I, I'll be happy or sad, ups and downs every fucking day, but, like, as long as I just, like, serve drumming, somehow, like, I know that I'm doing the right thing with my life, and that is enough to keep me, like, peaceful-minded, you know? It's like, I, you're never going to feel like, I'm just happy, I'm just content. You're never going to feel like, you know, Jim Carrey on the ice block with Kate Winslet in the movie. When you, you know, whatever. I mean, it's like, it, and that's the problem. Everything's like a fucking movie. Everybody teaches you that, like, you're going to fall in love with your soulmate, and it's going to be wonderful, and then you're going to, like, you're going to catch your stride and get a lucky break, and then you're going to have money, and everything's going to work, and you're going to be romantic and happy, whatever. Like, it's fucking retarded. It's like, <laughs> it's stupid to think that way. Like, we're so, like, watch so many TV shows and whatever, and, like, yeah, it's all the same shit. It's like every girl you ever date all has this like starry-eyed like movie dream of romance, and it's like, you're like babe, like it's been six months. Like I'm not gonna fucking every single time I see you like roll up with like flowers and, and like be like, oh, you know, like, it's just like, you know, and that's why everybody's divorced and miserable and shitty, and their kids hate them and oh what? It's like. But we don't have to, you know, I mean, we could just accept it and be like, oh yeah, it's not like the movies, we're humans, like, you know, life is imperfect, like, there's no, like, higher, there's no, like, nirvana in life where you're just always happy and everything, everything's romantic and you're just having, like, hot porn sex every day of your life for the next 50 years with some, like, amazing babe and, like, you know, whatever, <laughs> like, it's just, like, I don't know, we, people always, like, yes. It, there's so much pressure to like be happy and to live at the fullest amount of your potential. It's like, I don't know, I feel like once you have that thing, like art and creativity to serve, I'm like, who cares if you're happy? Like, it doesn't even matter. Fuck yeah. Yeah. That's, I fucking wrote a blog about it. <laughs> like, Fuck. just do your fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Stay alive. Yeah. Like, life matters. That's because once it's off, once it's gone, then you don't exist anymore. Yeah. So like, that's like the <laughs> ultimate goal, survival. Yeah. And then just like, happiness comes and goes. If you devote your life to happiness, it's like devoting your life to like finding whatever your drug of choice is and just being high all the time. It's like, if they built a fucking infinite happiness machine, you'd have to sit in it. And like, just get like fucking serotonin pumped into yeah, your brain yeah, all day, so you'd be like, oh, I'm so happy! Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is what I wanted. <laughs> oh, that's what people do. That's exactly what they do. They like, they uh, they're not whatever. Like, they're not feeling happy because they're fat, so they get liposuction. They're not feeling happy because they're sad, so they get antidepressants. The guy's not feeling happy because him and his wife aren't having sex anymore, so he buys Viagra. It's like. Just give me the pill. I want to be happy. TV says that that's what a happy person is. I want to be like him. So what do I got to do? And it's like, fuck that, dude. Like, think of something better than yourself. Like, like music or like, uh, I don't know, being a doctor or fucking just have like a purpose in your life that is meaningful and like, fuck, fuck being happy. It's great if you do get to be happy sometimes, but like, it's so not a prerequisite of like, living a good life, like, 
you know, it's just well, ridiculous. Like trying to stay in the sunlight all the time, like the pursuit of being in day sunlight all the time. Yeah. It's just like, what, you do that for a fucking couple of years and suddenly you, oh, I wish it would get dark. <laughs> it's the fucking balance that gives it the value. Yeah, that's that kind of Taoist thing. It's like, you're fucking kidding yourself if you think that anything can be just ultra consistent the same all the time. Like, I mean, I guess it can't, I guess that's what you're saying, is that, like, we're starting to see that it can, like, because of, like, the computer. And well, yeah, they're not happy, but, like, it can be so consistent that you lose, like, your emotions and your ability to, like, form meaningful bonds, because nothing, like, takes anything away from you. Nothing is uh, strong enough of a pull on your life to like change you. Like people didn't get divorced before cause they would fucking die if they did. Like, you know, cause they were so poor and they needed a mom and they yeah. needed a dad and they needed the kids doing chores. Work. And like, yeah. they, it was like no time to even think about stupid bullshit that like breaks up couples these days. It was, I don't know. The only time I feel like content or like pleasant is after like a super hard day of work and like getting to eat like good food, you know, when you're so hungry and it yeah. just feels so good to eat or like being at like a show or just seeing some like insanely like moving art that someone like really thought about and put a lot into and like you get it. Like just feelings like that or just like meeting a girl and like getting along. Oh no, kitty. Very bad. <laughs> Yeah, you need a girl getting along. Like, but, like, having security and, like, having money to buy everything I want, like, that, it's, like, cool. Like, oh, yeah, I can go to Starbucks again. <laughs> like, never, like, when I'm sitting there drinking the iced latte, I'm never, like, oh, yeah, this feels so good. Like, I'm so happy. Unless I haven't had one for like six months or what, something. What, what? <laughs> it's funny because I've never liked Starbucks so much until we started this tour. Yeah. And now it's like this beacon of like, they have vegetarian food and coffee that's going to fucking wake me up. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and like, I really like Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. It's like at home, I'm just like Starbucks, khakis, fucking CD 1.9, <laughs> fucking, what are they, what am I going to go in there and listen to some fucking Kenny G and <laughs> shove a latte in my ass? <laughs> like, but now it's like, Starbucks, it's so like, not, it has nothing to do with like American, it's just like, it's just survival. It's just, I'm out here, I feel like shit, I'm tired, I'm sick, I'm, I can't poo, I can't fucking open my eyes, I'm just like, I have it. Yeah, and you just like, know what you're gonna get. Yeah, and you just like, you seek it out, and it's cool, and it's like, but there's such a fine line between that and, and all of a sudden waking up one day and realizing you're a creature of habit. And there's like, uh, these books I used to read, Tom Brown books, he's a Native American guy, and he always said, he's like, kind of more from, he's more leaning in the Eric Angstrom perspective, like anything you do more than once, anything you do the same exact way more than once, you might as well be dead while you're doing it. <laughs> he said, it's, there's no point to repeating the same moment in life. He's like, yeah, anything. He's like, even if you brush your teeth the same way in the morning, he's like, <laughs> he's like, if you ever catch yourself all of a sudden driving to work and you wake up and you're like, he's like, you've all been there. He's like, you don't actually remember how you even got there. Yeah. Somehow you're just on your way to work in the car, and you're like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm dressed. My clothes are on. My teeth are brushed. I'm showered. I'm, I'm not. I'm not hungry. <laughs> All right, fine." He's like, "He's like that's hours of your fucking life just gone. You might as well have been dead." Like, that's what? the revelation that made me snap and quit my job and move out of my apartment, break up with my girlfriend, and start smoking methamphetamines. It's <laughs> <laughs> looked how good that turned out. Well, yeah, I guess I went, I went from that. To fucking the epitome of garbage. Then I met Homestyles here, and now I'm chilling in Turkey, drinking a beer at 11:45, talking yeah. about life. Transition is always <laughs> difficult in people's lives, especially young people's lives. But everybody, I mean, when you try and make a major transition, it might seem pretty horrible at the time. But it always fucking, you know, you know, man, you know, when your life is that boring, sometimes it takes fucking crystal meth and job quitting to fucking. Snap you out of your fucking You gotta shit. turn it to shit before you can figure out what's gonna turn it to yeah. gold. But even then, it's not gonna be happy all day long every day. Yeah. Who would want that? Fuck that, man. Prozac it's, life? It's fucking perspective, though. You know, it's like, 
like I, I know where people are coming from when they say that. It's like, you know, I want to get to a point where I feel like I am in a good place and like I have set things up for myself so that, you know, whatever the person's goals might be, like having a family or whatever and having a house and like then doing that life that they envision well, to for them, themselves. That's that bigger thing. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, but it's just like, not really. It. I don't know. What's man. the point? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just based on TV and movies. The fucking the, the, two, the pile of kids, the wife, the, the dog, the garage, the white picket well, fence. Well, that's just based off of what he was saying about survival. Because originally you had to have the wife and the kids, and we'll fuck the dog, but. Well, that's why traveling's good, is because you meet people that weren't exposed to that shit their whole lives. And they've got the different perspective that we can. Like on the train, when that girl said, the reason that I live my life or whatever is to make my parents happy, and it is such a mind blower to <laughs> yeah. all of us. Yeah. Like Sarah actually got like offended. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, but there's really like a huge segment of the population that is like it, and it's not even strange to them. It's like, I live to honor my parents. Like, they That's brought me up. Thing, like, I guess so. like it's so foreign, but so interesting. Like, I don't agree with it, like, personally, but, like, just that that exists. Like, that kind of shit is what I hope to find out on this tour. Which is like Thailand. I mean, we, loving, loving their king and their leader and just having a total, like, trust and faith and adoration of their, of their political power. It's like, we have no, nothing now. We're all, every man for himself in America. Well, every man looking after his own fucking ass and his own little personal... Whatever, and it's like, it's so like, I don't know, it's so sad. It's just like everybody's, and everybody's miserable. America's <laughs> fucking done. <laughs> like, there's going to be a war or something. So it might not be started by us, but like, something's going to come to America, and America's not even going to last a quarter of the Roman Empire. Where's your heart of something. darkness quote? I want to close off this conversation with that one. And then say that we wrote a natural death before we read that. And that we're as smart as Joseph Conrad. <laughs> Hurry. Maybe we're just fucking hacks to like think we're original, but we can just think of the same shit that every existentialist already thought of. Exactly. Well, there's four minutes of tape left. Can you find it? <clears throat> yeah, it should be in here. I just lay around and pretend we were dead all day. Got it? You want to read this, Eric? <laughs> I'll read it. Read it aloud. <laughs> you had all these same <laughs> thoughts, Gary, many a time. The mysteries of a universe. Wait, this song, I think we were both suffering from the same crushing metaphysical crisis. The mysteries of a universe made of drops of fire and clods of mud do not concern us in the least. The fate of a humanity condemned ultimately to perish from cold is not worth troubling about. If you take it to heart, it becomes an unendurable tragedy. If you believe in improvement, you must weep, for the attained perfection must end in cold, darkness, and silence. In a dispassionate view, the ardor for reform, improvement for virtue, for knowledge, and even for beauty is only a vain sticking up for appearances, as though one were anxious about the cut of one's clothes in a community of blind men.
in nowhere. We were in Asia. Are we in Europe yet? The Black Sea is to our right. The Mediterranean Sea is to our left. Europe is in front of us, exiting the darkness of the Asian continent. Welcome to Europe. <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> get that thing off. It's What's wrong with is... night vision? Nothing. The lighter side of vision is now when I cough, I can taste the mucus. Yeah, I got that too. <laughs> what happened? Someone spread a virus. Two people can see one. Two people can see one. <clears throat> a lot. Mine too. The curvature of my back is coming back. Already. Already. Since I put my mind to it. What have you been doing? I told my body to heal itself. And I described what I wanted out of it. Have you read The Secret? Read The Secret? <laughs> Oh, that looks like a Canadian duck. <laughs> nice mallard. <laughs> what a looking mallard, eh? <laughs> Here we are in Istanbul, and as you can see, it's raining. But it's not that cold for me. You guys There's ready? Like Serbia and all that shit, Croatia, yeah. Greece. Gary. The Bosphorus, the strait uniting the Sea of Marmara with the Black Sea. This is the center of the world. Point to it. So you guys see those dolphins? No. Fucking dolphins. Where? He was, he kind of popped out like straight this way, around where the birds are. When dolphins come, they will come again. day to stop and think and like be thoughtful. I think our culture could benefit from that. Are there people here tonight? Yeah, I wouldn't say packed per se. Best show in Turkey. Out of three. Come on. Better than last night. Fine. For Not sure. Forgotten. Not better than Ankara. Well, Ankara was all of since yesterday's fans. Ankara was like 40 people. No? No. Oh, poor Orjan. Yeah, he's... Is he alright? He's destroyed. <laughs> he's feeling it. Like, not in a good way. I, I don't like care about cool shit. <laughs> like, yeah, you do. Come on. I mean, I care about stuff, but I'm not like... Oh, I really like <laughs> this person. Like, if I say I hate something, it's because I think it's funny to say... <laughs> See, that's where the confusion falls in. That, yeah. Is that we always laugh about every, nothing matters, but the truth is, is the reason you and I care is because uh, too much shit matters. And now that I know that, I get destroyed, and it's then like, you have to wear this straight. It makes more sense to me. <laughs> yeah, he will try it now. Well, like, he said, okay, who? he will try it. Who? David. Oh, and Dave will wear it. We, we won't. No. Okay. Dave will also have sex with boys. <laughs> and you won't? No, I would. How often do you have... On my wrist. ...interesting conversations with people afterwards? Or re I never, rewarding conversations? I never have interesting or rewarding conversations. <laughs> but it might have a lot to do with introversion. Our first two tours, I had some that were, like, rewarding. But I've kind of done with that phase of like, oh, 
What's it like living in Pennsylvania? <laughs> oh, you're into DIY hardcore too? Oh, <laughs> this is so interesting to me that people in the same country like the same things. <laughs> like, after I realized that, and I met like 20 people that looked different but were exactly the same, then it was like, why talk to anyone? <laughs> it's not even having to do it, it's just like fucking depressing, man. It's like you start seeing these types of people, like 10 words come out of their mouth, yeah. and you're like, oh, you're like this stereotype. And there's like 20 of them. <laughs> but like, you know exactly what they are, too. Like, all yeah. of us know what they are. I'm just going through a really fucking weird point in my life where rather than hating it, I'm like, my grandma's shining through on me, and I'm like, we're all the same. Look. I don't, yeah, I don't hate and, it. And I don't disagree with it. I'm just like, well, that's really cool, man. Thanks for coming. Oh, where do you think we're at Nintendo? Oh. <laughs> well, I don't really like it, but listen, this is what I'm all about. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm just having this weird flip-flop of existence where suddenly I'm trying to let go of fucking horridness that has haunted me. And, like... Like, what stupid shit I would naturally hate and think was dumb, I just... My grandma is shining through on me in really weird, like... Half of me is like, stupid ways, half of me going like, wonderful ways. I, I don't even know what is fucking up and down anymore on this tour. I'm eating fucking eggs, <laughs> smoking fucking cigs. Like, and also Dash hating me, complaining, is going, like, reinforcing her life standard. So, like, when I'm absolutely fucking miserable, I'm like, give me a second, I'll think of something okay. Like, and I'm dead fucking serious. And I'm like, oh, That's just so hold on. I'm gonna, I may be upset, but I feel like something's gonna shine through in a second. <laughs> and it's fucking real. And which is way beyond my personal life experience to understand. What are you guys talking about? Anything. Life. I'll lie up. Deep shit. <coughs> Lift in general. <laughs> Whether it be good or bad, I'm ready to drop it. Misanthropy. What's that? I feel like you guys always look so cool and fucking whatever. And I always feel look like I end up being thing. like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! You just took it to the next level, dude. Or John, can I tell you something? Yeah. But you're our favorite tour guy of the entire tour flag. so far. I wanna be ro your roadie. Come on. <laughs> but again, you can. Be. You can. You're you can hiring. Our roadie. I miss you. I'll miss you too. All of you. Ande. Is that okay? Left hand. <laughs> How many years does Post Leben exist? How many years? Nine. We're gonna have our 10 year anniversary on this tour. Oh, okay. So, and how 10 years of failure. So I'm wondering about this tour. How did you make it happen? Like, you booked yourself everything? We thought of the idea in Vancouver one day. We were driving and we were bored and we wrote down every place we ever wanted to go. Israel being one of those places. Right. And we put everywhere we could possibly think of, even the craziest place that you would never want to tour, but we wanted to tour there. And then when we got home from that tour, we just started writing emails to every person who had ever contacted us in the last five years and just followed leads until we found the right promoters. It was a lot Leads of work. For everything. Yes. And does it pay? No. I wonder. No. No, no, no. So far, we're, we've lost $40,000 in the last month. And you just began. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully well, we, we lost it all at first, and that's <laughs> the amount that's left that we lost. Okay. Which is good, actually. That means we've but we have to speak to the mic, so. lost $60,000. That means it's going good. 
Okay. Only forty thousand dollars lost is better than how we started. Okay, so you're learning. <laughs> Once we get to Europe, people will pay us for shows, but the whole first month, nobody. It's just not how it works. They're like, oh, you spend five thousand dollars on flights, and you, uh, we'll you do everything to play the show. We'll and pay then, the local bands. Yeah, we'll pay the local bands one third of what we're giving you. And then, but they did get us like hotels. And Those you get, you get the flight. They pay for the flight, so. No. No. <laughs> oh, okay, you pay. Okay, but it's fun. I hope. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's really fun. It's fun now that we're in Israel. But and most gonna be girls. Most of the fun <laughs> is just like in your face to every other band, you know. What are your lyrics? Their you words. <laughs> words. Uh, you mean what do they mean? What do you discuss? What do you talk about? I mean? They're usually uh, metaphors for my examination on life via tales about animals or pop culture. So <laughs> anything that sounds like it's about a movie or a video game or a bear yes. is really about me being miserable. And you like video games? Not really. <laughs> just the sound. <laughs> I mean, I like old ones. The old ones. There is a time and place in my life. Where you played it. Yeah, but you get over that shit, you know? Exactly. I'm <laughs> with you, I understand. What are you, what are you into now, Eric? Drinking uh, beer. Art. <laughs> <laughs> Niacin. 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 Science. Time travel. <laughs> Pat Benatar. <laughs> flash dance. Europe. The singularity. People. And then birth. And then Game Boy. <laughs> you need to speak to And then Game Boy. Okay. After all that. Yeah. Oh, music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who makes your videos? This, this gentleman behind you named okay, Gary LaShance. Gary LaShance. He directed our first music video ever. So, and he goes on tour? He's with you the whole tour? Uh, for this tour, yeah. We're documenting everything. We're creating a series of TV episodes, or webisodes for the internet, and then making a full-length feature film that's going to be shown in festivals and win an Academy Award. Academy Award. Academy Award. That's in the U.S. for best movies. Academy Award. The Oscar, yes? The Oscars, that's right. Oscars. How Thank long is guys. the tour going to last? This tour? <laughs> two more months. Yes. Yeah, two more months. And you're not going to be home. Only in two more months, right? I don't want to think about oh, it. Oh, and so far what I've noticed mostly, what I love most about Horse the Band is that they're gay. <laughs> okay, I think we'll go straight to the song. Cut this. Thing. Hey, but I'm not sure about the end of the Oh, you fucking dick. Me? Solo crowd or what? Uh, I don't know. It's it's probably going to be pretty packed with all these people who come in. I know one song, it's called Syphilis. <laughs> Eric, why the piano? It's the only instrument I had. And it's used in more church hymns than guitar. Oh no. Dog. 
I'm not tired, I'm just fucking drunk off whiskey. There's a profound difference. I could have sex with a bottle of broken glass right now and I wouldn't yeah. mind. intense, brutal pack of fucking psychotic animals. Psychotic? I added an extra little <laughs> syllable there. All I gotta say about this town is... You're still not wearing earplugs? What? You're still not wearing earplugs? I never have. <laughs> For real? For real. For serious? For realsies, take one, take two, take three. I don't. I really should, but when all you do is scream, all you can hear is just fucking. Alright, check this out. This is what the fucking brutal metal is really all about. Everybody, watch. Great show. You saw the footage? You saw what happens? This is the After Effects. Because I'm in love with one girl. I'm not going to go try to get any pussy. I don't want any drugs. And I don't feel like drinking. So this is my alternative. Oh, and also I think laptops are gay. What about desktops? Sleep. <laughs> Wait until you see his reaction to this one. It okay. may be the best thing ever documented. <laughs> oh, sorry, Dad. Wait, do you need my computer for anything? Yes. Gary. Oh Hi.
fucking stupid. If I had only one wish, it would be that there was more smoke on stage. <laughs> Smoke machine. We don't even need it for the last song. All we need for the last song is a couple mental retards and a pair of sharp scissors. Do people have Down syndrome in Israel? Because I swear to fucking God, everybody in America has it. You can tell by the exaggerated brow and the tendency to drool on chicken. <laughs> You made it. What? You made it. I know. I've been here a while. Yeah? We got here early. I hope you enjoy it. I love it. I enjoy it. Hey, what's up, Gary? How you doing, dude? I'm just filming. Oh, cool. I'm trying to get the shot. Out. Nice, dude. What kind of shot are you talking about? What shot is that? Of me? Au revoir. Of my face? I don't look like but yeah, so I just, you know, I just met up with this morning and we rode the train together. Nice. That's nice. about it. So you had a, a nice day. It was great, but her fucking friend fucked it all up. <laughs> Damn it hell. Pile of shit. You get her Mail number? Are so good. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, they're usually fat. Like, what do they <laughs> expect? <laughs> they, so, they just so hang big. out. They're like, and they just stand there and they're like, so dumb. Like that guy in Singapore. Oh God. Friends, man. Always oh, friends. And your night? I <laughs> went to bed. Really just wish you all night. <laughs> just some warm milk. Or else. So there was no action. Your little grin betrays you. I don't know what you're talking about. So you had fun. Yeah. Good intro. I'm in Germany drinking beer. Beer, 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 Germany. Deutsch beer. Who's your new friend? Binding. I have less to do with her than you might think. <laughs> He's an innocent man. State your name and purpose. Cece Peniston, traveling the world I will notify every alone. Citizen, that is your girlfriend. What possessed you to book the most ambitious tour of all time? Um. I think I was more skeptical about it and was kind of hoping that something else would come up so we didn't have to do it. <laughs> I, um, but nothing came up. And then it was just like, all right, if we're going to do this, I'm just going to fucking do it and sit down. And from the, pretty much the second I sat down and started working on it, I, ne I never left my computer till it was done. Cause I, I was I was obsessed do, with doing it right, um, but I think it, it just hits a point where uh, you realize you're doing something crazy and ambitious, and you just want to push it as far as possible, and make as big as, an impact. Cause we could we could have done an Asian tour, could have done a European tour, but um, once we realized it was gonna be huge, we had to make it huger than anything anyone had ever seen before. I can't really, like, think of a good, consistent way of thinking about what's happening to me right now. Um, and it's like, I'm, I'm, the books I've been reading have been kind of like people coming from a similar situation. I just read The, the Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, and uh, in it he talks about, um, like, he was a sailor and he went around the world and he pretty, pretty much, 
he had a pretty depressing metaphysical outlook on life, which is maybe being confirmed on this trip by me at times. That's what it seems like. But then there you have moments of of ecstasy that seem to uh, justify everything else and like, you know, a connection you make with someone um, in some random place can, can be a really special moment um, that maybe transcends the barrenness of existence. Um, but the general thing that stays on my mind is uh, money and not losing it. So it's every day I recalculate the odds of breaking even and it's hard it's hard to escape that since I'm in charge of that shit for this tour. Um, I need to always be thinking about it and uh, I have a personal stake in this financial success of the band both being a band member and being the one who paid for most of this tour so it is unfortunately something I need to always think about. I'm really nervous about tonight because it's sort of like the litmus test for Germany and Germany in the UK is pretty much what we're counting on to pay for this entire tour. Nice ontology is the way of the future. Better living through better circulation. And on the side, better mustaches.
That's what my life is all about. All right. Let's divide the room up into eight sections and do a cheer where each section has to say a different word. I'd like to thank the person who thought it'd be a good idea to get me more Jack Daniels. You have failed. Except for love. Nada no es importante. I only speak Spanish, but you three guys probably understand that, right? No me importa. Carajo. Right? Right? You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Fuck, I don't give a shit. I don't care. Las <laughs> Marlo. <laughs> we were just like giving it our all, like there was no sound on stage at all. We were like everybody was screaming along. I don't know if it's getting a worse or better. We're not even fucking playing. But I'm still coughing. Like, and I feel negative. All I'm I feel like is that I'm annoying the entire fucking band. I'm, well, I'm not trying to like bring you up. Or anything. I just I'm think just it's funny when you're. Oh, it's funny. It's a funny thing for <laughs> you. You've got pneumonia and you're pounding it's booze so all do. day. <laughs> like we're, like we're given this kind of situation. What am I supposed to do? Just make <laughs> wait it out. <laughs> I can can't wait that shit out. <laughs> That's why it's funny. Hi, show. Sounded really bad to me, but I fucking played See? and I had my own amusements in the weird like morbid way that I was saying like there's happy, right, yeah, happy amusement happy, and morbid amusement. Morbid amusement. Exactly. But the truth is, I got nothing to complain about because I fucking play in Italy, so fuck it. But I'm in the total like wasted so seven whiskey on ice, that? seven beer mood that I just want to like knock shit over and be ah and play Cookie Monster for a little while or go to sleep. Like but aside from that, who fucking cares? Uh -huh. Like in all actuality. Like we were just talking about breaking and shit before like the show, the worst and now I just feel like breaking shit <laughs> and just finding amusement out of it. Like but yeah. well, I mean, the, like, bottom, bottom the, kid, the kids cheered. They never seen us before. There were several different. several dudes I talked to that were like. You're my favorite band. You're my dad. You know, because everybody loves us so much. And like, there's. Sounded good. What are you gonna do? I mean, we can take this anywhere we want. Facts a fact. Bottom line, fine deal. <laughs> we get paid the same amount whether the <laughs> kids are here or not. I don't care about the money because it just goes to Dave anyway. I'm just glad that. Well, the more that goes to Dave, well, more we get. In like, the long run, yeah, we, we, yeah, we get paid. <laughs> but uh, I just need enough money to buy a shotgun to blow my own face off. <laughs> really. What you do? That's darker than anything show. I've said or broken. So Dash, you're like in, you you're in bankruptcy for the amount of times you shot I wish you were here when I broke all this shit in the room and nobody even remembers but Sarah. Do it! Is that humor? Yes! As long as you don't break the mirror. Look at Sarah. Out. She supports everything. Is this good or bad? Well, she hasn't seen the, the dark side yet, but... Oh! See, but I was trying to explain that to her. Do it! <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I'm just gonna go to the van now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Oh, broken mirror. Dude. That was a chair. Seven I years. hit the chair. That's seven years now. I hit the chair. Oh, seven years. <laughs> that was the totally the chair. See you, fell. Don't even hide it. Hide it like a third grader. <laughs> Wood. That was totally the chair. Oh, you guys. Oh wait, oh, that's a Mr. Mr. Peace. It's <laughs> a pretty big, pretty big overlook. We got any? I'm not even saying what I was about to say. I touched no mirrors. 
Mirror, 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 mirror. Fuck you, I. Europe is so amazing. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I am Lagalon, defender of this forest. Do not tread any further in these fabled woods. I shall smite thee with the fury of a thousand dying saplings. Butter. <laughs> Don't! <laughs> so easy. Fucking jerk. I am the spider smiter. You ready? <laughs> Didn't even go anywhere. I wouldn't say he's been a surprise. Watch out. <laughs> At all? Although I do feel like he feels alienated because I've been hanging out with Sarah a lot and like John is new, Dash is being himself, <laughs> David is kind of always gets along with everyone but doesn't go on adventures and stuff. So like, I don't know, I think that Nathan's a little bit lonely and I feel kind of bad about it and it's affecting his behavior a little bit. I don't want him to be like that. But besides that, he's really trying to like improve himself. And he still falls prey to all of his normal things, but like it's not, I don't think it's really getting on anyone's nerves. Except I did get pissed at him the other day when he <laughs> told me it was too early in the day to listen to me start hating things. Anyways. <laughs> What's going on with Eric and Sarah? Nothing really. I mean, I always I like to hang out with girls because I don't think that I think like a girl, but I think that I just have more fun with a female, <laughs> even if it's like completely friendly. And Sarah likes to sleep on my shoulder and everyone assumes that we're like boning. <laughs> <And> like <laughs> I'm not gonna push her off and I don't think that she wants to like sleep on my shoulder so that something further can happen I don't know I like Sarah though she's always happy and not faking it so that people think she's always happy it's just like really hard to keep her in a bad mood for more than like a second. And that's really good and rare for a girl. Oh. <laughs> it's the right kind of girl to have on tour because most girls can't hang. And even though she does a lot of girly shit like exploding her suitcase and losing everything, <laughs> like she also can hold her alcohol without becoming extremely annoying doesn't care if she can't take a shower, doesn't have to have makeup on every second, or actually she doesn't even like wearing makeup, and can just like hang with Nathan, like calling her a hooker like all day long. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, <laughs> no one deserves that, but she doesn't give a shit, so that's cool. For sure. Why are you doing this tour? I don't really know. <laughs> like, at first it was just to see the world and try to turn some heads and get, you know, like look what we can do. We can use the internet. We don't need these people that hate us anyways and we hate working with them. 
and now it's just kind of become so abstracted that I don't even think about any of that stuff anymore. Now it's just like we go to a place and play a show and hopefully the people there like it. And then I also thought about what I was saying, like, oh, like now other bands can start doing this and like, fuck them. Like, <laughs> I don't want them to do it because it's going to make everybody seen like the U.S. with a bunch of horrible imitation bands way too many bands going through people getting jaded people not coming to shows as much and like also no other band could even plan this tour it's like there's no way <laughs> I've never met a band that has a member like Dave graduated from Stanford and I'm like a pretty capable guy too <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> nobody in bands can do this shit so don't even try you're gonna fail you're gonna lose money your band doesn't have a niche like Nintendo Core 600 people aren't gonna go see you in Malaysia like maybe like 50 will Loreen Drive fucking whatever the fuck <laughs> generic ass band you're in where there's like 40 more of you that are all popular in the US, you can't do this tour because no one knows who you are because you're not special. There's probably a couple other bands who could do this tour, but they wouldn't be able to book it themselves. So, or organize anything. So it's not for goodwill towards the scene, it's just for our own personal enjoyment and worldwide fame while it lasts. Gary, I don't want you to make it look like I have some nervous twitch with this stick. <laughs> I won't. I just really miss baseball. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add? If I seem like a dick, it's just because I'm nervous. I don't know how to do interviews like this. Like... Deep down, I think everything I said was funny. And I don't know the answers to any of these questions. I just am bored, kind of. And I want to write a book and write really cool music. And that's it. I'm going to have a kid one day maybe two, and meet like a girl that's like not even close to a compromise in any way. Great, this is great. Are you guys having fun? That is good to hear. Dave, play something really nice. This song is about our merchandise. I need four shots of whiskey, please. Like, right now, if possible. No ice. Second warning. I'll give you a 10 second warning again, just in case. I 
I used to bush dive all the time. Yeah, but this is. Oh my god! Help! 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 He's coming out of the closet. Arrivederci. Hey, hey, I got some poopa. <laughs> I never thought I would see this in my life. <laughs> Victory! I'll see you! Victory! So, Rome, the Roman Empire, the Colosseum, fucking Catholicism, and now, of course, the band. <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm about world achievements. This song goes out to the giant hairs in Balakka. Our other two shows in Italy were very bad. Very, very bad. What the fuck? Should we play more songs? Because you sound like you're all gonna die. In a nice way. A nice way. Pizza songs! Fuck pizza. that the snare drum wasn't tuned right, so we're gonna start the set over from the beginning. The greatest civilization ever. All right. You getting ready to strip or what? That's fine. I wanna see the biggest fucking circle pit ever in fucking Rome or whatever you guys call this place. I'm feeling it. I don't want this to sound bad, because I don't feel any bad feelings towards you. But honestly, you guys are the worst audience ever. <laughs> I disagree, I really like you. This is fucking Rome. You guys had that fucking guy Caligula. He had all these orgies and shit. Fucking sex everywhere. And Nero, he burned down your entire city. And you guys are like... Fucking party, man. Let it go, Shaka. Woo! Oh, fuck you. Oh, he's got one. We're the band, and we understand why you don't like us. This is the center of art and culture in the entire Goliath planet, and we're just not that good. <laughs> hey, oh. You're supposed Thanks. to all, You're supposed to all go boo. Bye. 
Taking showers. It's me. 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 We gotta get up in like five hours. Me. Paka 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 paka. There's no problem with parking. Oh my god. Same point. There is a problem with parking. Oh fuck. Oh my god! The fucking boombox! It goes a boomba! Boombastic boombox! Come on, come on. Come on now. She's <laughs> <Come on, laughs> got legitimately <laughs> PO'd about the boomba. Oh, dude. That wasn't legit. Welcome to Slovenia. Homeland and origin of Chester the Cheetah. And Jesus. <laughs> It doesn't seem different at all. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to Asia, it's like so much closer to the US and like yeah, Western it's, it's culture. Country, yeah. yeah. So like it's just kind of I don't know, very calm now. <laughs> We're just like Oh it's you're crazy. beautiful hills and castles <laughs> and cheese. <I'm> like <laughs> I don't know. And uh what is for you the best media man? <sighs> The best what? Mega Man. Mega Man. Welcome on. Deuce. Yeah. <laughs> For me, personally. Nothing matters. Life is empty. Yet still full of meaning. Not meaning. Not meaning. Uh things. Things. Yes. <laughs> Life is full of things. <laughs> but they all have no meaning. And they all result in complete emptiness. <laughs> Can you finish with the joyful words? <laughs> Wait, what? Joyful words. Yeah. In the face of that annihilation, creatures such as the kangarooster still live and flourish and lead happy lives because they know that since nothing matters, <laughs> it doesn't matter that nothing matters. And there's no reason to be sad about it. Unless you want to. Yeah. <laughs> but you could also be happy about it if you wanted to. <laughs> Our next <laughs> album's gonna be about peninsulas. <laughs> <laughs> Did someone take a shit in the middle of the last song? Did you guys smell that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know when people say something really optimistic, it's hard to believe. But this single show is better than all three of our shows in Italy combined. So I'm really happy that you're all here, and I'm happy that we're here, and I'm happy that we're all here together, and all that fun stuff. And trust me when I say this, I'm the first person to talk shit. So yeah, good job. Hear air flowing or feel it. There's like your stereo on or something. In your <laughs> 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 Playing some method, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's Nathan. Hey, boys. Yeah, boys. Will you roll over so I can record you? Fuck, man. No. <laughs> Dave has been attacked by some kind some of gnarly fucking shit. Whoa. They're getting worse? I don't know. They, like they, the color is getting more defined. Yeah, it's just getting redder and redder. I'm not even gonna bother showing you my like, arms. You can imagine. Is there anywhere really? else other than your neck and face? My ankles. My arms. Is it anywhere like on? Like it's not on my body okay. at all. So it's like it's I was wearing a shirt place. and they fucking got me. When did it start? Motherfuckers. Could it be mumps? The morning of Rome. How's your rash? It's fucking a gun. Show me. Eric, that was impressive. Did anybody want to walk the gas station with me and buy a bottle of whiskey? <laughs> oh. 
sounds like a good undertaking. Yes, I like your idea. <laughs> We're horse the band from Who Gives a Fuck. And I'd like to thank the failure of all things in this world for being our constant ally and proving once and time again, fuck it. Yes! <laughs> Not fucking laughing. <laughs> this song is called Rice for catering. <laughs> <laughs> slip during the first two songs, but then Nathan put a towel on the beer puddle. I thought tonight was gay. <laughs> you know what I realized? How good I think each show is, it's just how drunk I am. <laughs> this one is pretty swollen. They sing about me. Jerry. Hey. Are you making me into a fool right now? No. <clears throat> Good. I was just gonna ask you what went down last night with the promoter. Realizing he didn't have the money to pay you that he... I don't even know, Nathan contracted. just said he was talking to Dave about not paying us. And I just told him that he had to pay us. <laughs> <laughs> what was his reason for saying he couldn't pay you? I understand there's not a lot of, not so many people. Uh, most of them for you and August Burns Red. But I was just hoping maybe pay you less so I can make more. <laughs> like he said that, like to my face. Man, that guy was like. Dumb. <laughs> Did you hear his reason for our catering? What? He was sitting there, he was talking to the tour manager of Misery Singles or whatever, and the tour manager was like, hey man, there's, uh, there's, not, there's like, what, we got 19 guys on our, our tour, you guys got what, nine on yours? And he's just like, you got, you brought us like three packets of meat, a loaf of bread, and a bowl of rice. <laughs> and, he's, he, and he's just being really passive, he's like, it's just, that, it, I'm just kind of disappointed, man. And, and, and I, like, I grabbed a store, I was like, it's okay to say it. It sucks. <laughs> like, and then like the guy's like, well, we, we had show with um, the same many people and a death by stereo and a, and we got tons of food. And, and then when they came, they said, oh, we're not hungry. So we thought today we wouldn't bring anything. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, our show in Greece got canceled because the venue a political youth center got attacked and burned by Nazis a few days ago. <laughs> well, isn't that just typical Nazi behavior? They can't guarantee safety and security for the bands, fans, and audience. <laughs> play more songs but first it's important for me to tell you that both of these men today in a gas station bought a travel pussy <laughs> so in case you're wondering they are sick though I'm just I'm sick of the real thing you know how when you have too much of something no matter what it is you get sick of it I haven't seen you buy a plastic sandwich yet. 